do we have a new action camera king? DJI seem to have done everything right with the Osmo Action 4. But there's nothing more accurate than a thorough review showing the strong and the weak sides, so let's inspect. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel, I'm Michael, the Tech Mishka, and today we're going to talk about action cameras, something I keep on testing in the past few years and I've stumbled across multiple, which are mediocre, some of them good, some of them really great. And with all the promises around the new generation, DJI hope that this is going to become the king of action cameras. And there are many reasons to believe this is the case, because they seem to have addressed everything that the community wanted to see improved with the third generation, bringing it over here, including newer, brighter, larger image sensor, a lot better dynamic range and many other minor tweaks which hopefully are going to bring exceptionally good image quality. So this thorough inspection is about finding all the positive and negative sides of the DJI Osmo Action 4. It is more expensive than the predecessor, but just a tiny bit. $399 used to be a GoPro territory, but sadly not anymore, because all the tech prices are going up and Osmo Action 4 feels now affordable, given the pricing of some other competitors. More accessories are now available as well, and most of them are quite good. This time I'm unboxing the Adventure Combo, but if you prefer to save some dollars, even the standalone version is good enough, I'd just think of buying a telescopic selfie stick if I were you. Lately, this trend of pulling the devices out sideways is to be seen with more and more brands. I like it. Underneath these two smaller boxes, there's the selfie stick included with the combo, and this is Osmo Action 4. Given the fact 4 is considered to be unlucky number in China, I'm kind of surprised to see this name here. Shape, materials, feeling, it's all very similar to Action 3. And of course, I had to try the frame of the older generation right away. It's perfectly compatible. There are some differences, though. The speaker cuts on the top, now circular. The shutter button is red instead of orange. There's no more rubberized section at the bottom. But that's pretty much it concerning the design. DJI continued to use this so convenient mounting bracket top-notch build quality, and many people would agree with me with the statement that this is right now the action camera with the best build quality out there. Under the hood, specs are even more impressive. An upgraded 1x1.3-inch image sensor, there's f by 2.8 aperture, optics with 155-degree field of view, video recording is up to 4K 120 frames per second, there's a color temperature sensor, 160-minute battery life with fast charging support, the camera is waterproof without a case, has phenomenal temperature tolerance and weighs around 150 grams. When it comes to the tech specs, I usually try to remind you that not always the best sounding specifications necessarily convert into the best possible image quality and performance, but I'm really happy to say it's not the case with Osmo Action 4, because whatever we see from this action camera so far is pretty neat. Likely, in terms of processing power, DJI still rely on the very same that has been deployed with Osmo Action 3. They have upgraded the image sensor though, and they seem to reuse the very same that was deployed with the DJI Mini 3 Pro drone, meaning that they do have a lot of experience with it. It's bigger, captures a lot greater dynamic range, and there's a new color grading mode called D-Log M, something that is already in place with the DJI Mavic 2 Pro and some of the DJI Mavic 3 series. So that's really great news for people who are professionals and are about to use Osmo Action 4 for such kind of purposes. The optics has also been improved, brighter, better and sharper. That's in case you have seen part of the saga around DJI Osmo Action 3. There even is sharpness control included in the menus. Speaking of which, before seeing all the samples, I think it's a good idea to make a quick menu walkthrough. If you have ever used a DJI action camera, the interface is gonna feel very familiar. Simple, yet functional. Stable, really stable. Not a single glitch, struggle or hiccup. If you wanna find the best action camera about stable firmware and menus, you're looking at it. There are both basic and more advanced functions. The basic ones are easily accessible from the touch screen. You can configure the video resolution, the aspect ratio. I usually keep mine at 4K 16x9, 24 frames per second because it feels more natural to the eye. 
but there are many people who would go for 30, even 60 frames per second. In 4K, 120 is a possibility. This is how you can record in slow motion, which finally is good enough to properly challenge GoPro's slow motion. If you want to go really crazy about it, 240 FPS is also available in Full HD resolution. Note that the higher the frame rate, the more challenging it is going to be for the camera to handle the huge bitrate, so it's normal to see these warnings about recording limits. I've pushed the Osmo Action 4 as much as possible and had no issues thus far. Let's move on further. If you try the ROX Steady controls, it's about stabilization, almost gimbal-like, and there's the option to have horizon balancing up to 45 degrees in 4K and up to 360 degrees in lower resolution. There continues to be digital zoom available. I've never been a fan of this one because it has negative impact on the image quality, but still nice to have. There are some extra settings, of course. If you tap on the Pro option, this is where the real deal is. Manual control of the exposure, the field of view adjustment, and you can set it to be very wide, but you can also choose the de-warp option, which is gonna set a narrower tuning and is also going to mask the distortions as much as possible. It's the mode that I most often use for e-bike and e-scooter reviews. The 10-bit D-Log M setting is precious, probably the reason many people who like the Rosmo Action 3 will seriously consider going to Generation 4, because without any doubt, it shows a significant dynamic range improvement. But even if you shoot at the normal mode, results are gonna be excellent. Important reminder, if you plan to use any of these professional settings, you will for sure need to apply some post-processing to the footage and some proper color grading. But the extra time you're going to invest is totally worth it. Going further with the samples, you can well see the naturally looking colors, the excellent white balance, the improved dynamic range. At night, Osmo Action 4 rocks. It's still not a full-frame camera match, but with some patience and with using an additional gimbal, you can achieve remarkable results much better than what I initially expected. In that regard, going for this larger image sensor was a really smart move. Just check the side-by-side -side footage samples with Hero 11. You can use the few quiet seconds and let me know in the comments which footage do you like better and why. about the microphone quality. If you recall all these reviews of Osmo Action 3, the microphone quality was good enough. Now with the fourth generation, it's even better. And DJI keep the option of easily connecting an external microphone. Now we're testing the internal one and you can let me know in the comments below what you think of the overall quality. Part of the software ecosystem is the DJI MIMO app. It's the one used by DJI primarily for consumer-grade electronics like the Pocket Series, the smartphone gimbals and, of course, the action cameras. For Android users, there's a slight disadvantage that you must download the app from the DJI's website. If you are about to remotely control the camera or perform firmware updates or make the selfie stick invisible or build some short videos, this is your best shot and there are so many good features inside. As for the video editor proposed, it's pretty good, especially for quick posting on social media platforms. You know, I really tried to discover issues with the camera. I've intentionally stressed the battery as much as possible and tried to quickly drain or overheat without success. Battery life is rock solid, usually above two hours, and firmware, as mentioned, is also super stable. No skipped frames, no glitches, no troubles at all. The Wi-Fi speeds are remarkable as well, but let's try to put something on the drawbacks list. Well, looks like the USB port is according to the 2.0 standards, because maximum transfer rates on my end have been just around 40 megabits per second. The increased price and also the lack of different housing color options. I made up the last one because otherwise this feels too empty. In the end, Osmo Action 4 happens to be everything we wanted to see from Osmo Action 3. And correct me if I'm wrong, but it's not often to be seen a company keeping all the good things from a previous generation and bringing in all the features that the community asked for, because essentially that's how Osmo Action 4 was built. Is it the king of action cameras? Right now, 
given the image quality, the build quality and so on, I believe it is. Question is, how exactly GoPro is going to respond with a new generation later this year? So that's been everything about this episode and in case you have some questions or you want to share your opinion about the image quality, the comment is the right place. And if you want to support the channel, you can do it by ordering your Osmo Action 4 from the link posted in the video description area or any other way. Subscribing, liking the video, that's one of the many options. And I, Michael, really look forward to seeing you in our next episode. Bye!